last season on the Modern Gaffa. Oh, sure. This girl is comfortable on my Star Wars shirt. She looks like Star Wars. How about you just not talk to me about this anymore? I don't see what I do wrong. What makes me a bad roommate? I can should um have a date all right call me but don't give up on valerie don't give up wait how'd you know her name was valerie what who the hell are you i'm matt miller i'm with the time association they're making you forget your own name because that way you'll forget who and what you are i may know a lot about old movies but i can't fight robots of course you can you're a gaffer See you later. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> what the fuck do you want? What? You never seen a grown ass man in a Star Wars shirt? Oh, let me guess. You're probably thinking, oh, he's wearing a Star Wars shirt. He must like Star Wars. Fuck you. What, you gonna go home and write a gay ass show about this shit? So fucking gay. What the, what the fuck? Fucking pussy. <laughs> Something wrong? I saw this guy in a Star Wars shirt. Like the one you were wearing the day that we- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it looked a little small on him. So what? You think it was the same one? Is that even possible? Absolutely not. It burned down along with the rest of my clothes and my apartment and my roommate last summer. <laughs> what? Did I not tell you about that? No. Let's not worry about that right now. Besides, I believe you just asked me what I want to do tonight. Way back in my first episode ever, I talked about Turner Feature Animation, the studio behind Cats Don't Dance. I also mentioned that Turner Feature Animation did the animated portions for the Page Master, but this came off like the Page Master only had a few random animated segments, like in Mary Poppins, but in fact, more than 75% of the film was animated. On top of that, the film does a great job of melding animation and live action, and that's the sign of a great film. Two worlds colliding, with one existing beside another. From illustration and imagination, from animation itself to the inside of a human body. The Page Master is an extremely nostalgic film for me. Things like Cats Don't Dance and The Secret of Nim were just oddities I occasionally caught on TV, but we actually had a VHS copy of The Page Master, so I used to watch it all the time. This is the first time I've seen it in years, and something as simple as the exterior of the library is enough to send me back to 1994, when I was three. I remember that the film stars Macaulay Culkin, but I was surprised to see Christopher Lloyd and to hear the voices of Patrick Stewart and Whoopi Goldberg and Frank Welker, not to mention Jim Cummings, Phil Hartman, and even Leonard Nimoy. Another big nostalgia trip for me was Macaulay Culkin's character Richard, who is afraid of everything that is out there to get him. He won't climb a tree, and he won't even ride a bike without wearing battle armor first. After taking shelter in a library, Richard meets Mr. Dewey, a librarian who sees that he clearly needs to get out a bit more. After Richard is pointed towards a payphone, he is thrust into a world of illustrations and sent on a quest to find the exit of the library. On the way, Richard is joined by three talking books, Adventure, Fantasy, and Horror. On their way, the group encounters the mysterious Dr. Jekyll, who shockingly turns into the monstrous Mr. Hyde. The group then runs into Captain Ahab and Moby Dick, and are then separated, with Richard and Adventure getting picked up by Long John Silver. After the group is reunited, they head through Fantasyland, and it takes all of their teamwork and Richard's newfound bravery to take down a fierce dragon. It turns out this was all one big test put together by the elusive Page Master, designed to make Richard face his fears. So how well does the Page Master blend live action and animation? Well, the animation looks good on its own, and the few shots where they're together looked good when I was younger, but luckily there aren't many of those. This has been my biggest trip down memory lane, and this is just the beginning. Oh. 
Hey, it's that guy from before. The one who was wearing a really small Star Wars shirt. I should go ask him where he got it. Yes, I I'll definitely fucking know. Uh, hey there. I'll call you back, boo-boo. What the fuck do you want? Uh, I just wanted to know where you got that shirt. This? Oh, I got all some little shit in my muggin' days. Uh... All right, thanks anyway. Yeah, he was tall, he had a bitch-ass fucking voice, and he did not want to give me this shirt. Wait a minute, that sounds kind of like... You're always angry at me. I don't see what I do wrong, what makes me a bad roommate. Wait, Tell's alive? Are you serious? That's great. Wait a minute, if he didn't want to give you the shirt, how come you have it now? Well, see, that's a funny-ass story, actually. See, I knocked his ass down, and then I said, there's some motherfucker. See, it's not your fucking day. Give me the goddamn shirt, I'm gonna cut your fucking throat! Did, did, did you cut his throat? Nah. Oh, thank God. I stabbed him in his fucking gut, and I took away a fucking shirt. Um, okay. So he is dead, then. Yep. I was psycho as shit back in the day. I got tired of people being fake and shit. I mean, I had the chance to be a spirit knight. But you know what? I changed myself around. Now I'm really nice. Um, what the hell is a spirit knight? I haven't mugged anyone since. I still wear this shirt because... Goddamn, Star Wars is cool. Wow, that's, um, good for you. Peace out, bro. Kid's alright. Oh my god, where were you? I had a nightmare that the rats of the Nim came back and you almost got killed and they, they were gonna take you and I didn't know what to do. Is that what you're worried about? Listen, I'm not gonna let anything bad happen to you. I promise. Focus.